Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching Monkuki vs. Cybernetic Pony on Tomb of Heroes. I'm Shadow333, once again your host. I continue to be who I am. Because changing who I am is actually a fairly large amount of work. I've considered it, though. I'm not sure if Shadow333 is really an appropriate name for someone my age, but it's, it's there, so... On with the show! So, Tomb of Heroes, a map we have seen a great deal of, and... CISO, a species we have not seen a great deal of. Actually, this is the first time I've seen CISO tonight, and I think in the last couple weeks. So CISO for Cybernetic Pony, and Monkey on the other hand, probably going for Vekir. He always does, and he continues the trend. Going with tradition and deciding not to do anything too fancy. Vekir it is. So Cybernetic Pony is CISO, Monkey is Vekir, and Cybernetic Pony is... Well, not doing anything really special, building up RPs. As is Monkuki. Monkuki is just setting up a couple scouts to figure out what Cybernetic Pony is up to. Neither player doing anything too extraordinary in the first 16 seconds of the game. Not that that's when you actually do anything extraordinary. Unless you will actually... No, nothing extraordinary. Scouts being sent out for both sides. Resource processors being built. This is entirely normal play. Anyway, with... With Monkuki setting up... Vekir, I'm guessing... Oh, let's see, Tomb of Heroes. So this sort of map, oftentimes what you'll see is a fair amount of economy developed by both sides. Usually around the 7 or 8 minute mark, they start developing the natural if they have an economic... or military advantage, I should say. And then from there, it's usually something that lasts about 15-20 minutes, sometimes even 30 minutes, with players continuing to get, try to get expansions. Now, this is not a bad map for recovering on. It's not a great map for doing that, but you can kind of hide as you go along. It's still not something you want to do. I've also seen some base trades happen from time to time, and you can sometimes get proxy strategies to the north here. I don't know how likely it's going to be given the way that even start works, but by the way the current start setup works with 3 RPs and 60 flick crystal, you can't easily set up shop right above your opponent's base, but it's not an uncommon thing to do. Now, Cybernetic Pony is more in the position to do that than Monkuki is. It's typical of CISO to do this, rather than Vekir. But it's something that clearly is not happening. Cybernetic Pony does not seem particularly keen to set up Proxy Factory, Macrofab, and then set up a bunch of Twin Mars in. Speaking of which, I'm not sure the last time we've seen Twin Mars. I think it's been a while. I don't even think we've seen Twin Mars in the last two versions of the game. But anyway, Cybernetic Pony is just about to win the game, so that is game. Monkuki about to lose. Well, that's too bad. Really short. Surprised that... Special Ops and Marine was given that much latitude. Seriously though, Monkuki about three minutes down from where Cybernetic Pony is probably going to be setting up a, either a couple more Veer class units or getting his own scouts going towards the north side of the map. So neither pair of scouts is going to meet each other. That's why the Special Ops and Marine actually managed to get the damage they dealt. Dealt, but Monkuki is going to have more to deal with when it comes to his scouts getting inside of Cybernetic Pony's base than vice versa. Cybernetic Pony does have an armory and a factory built, being built up. A Marine going towards the north side of the map. Going to get rid of this comm hub so that he has complete free reign over the north side of the map, or northeast side of the map, without Cybernetic Pony knowing what's going on. Because, of course, Tomb of Heroes does have the neutral I lied to everyone comm hubs. Unlike the observatory, or observation hubs that were mentioned in the Kratoria game earlier, these are just regular comm hubs that are allied to all players rather than observation hubs that have much larger vision radius, but that will, in the next version, be capturable. The idea, of course, being that you get units near them and then you can use it to scout. Well, in this case, these just reveal the area around them. So it's really hard to get to the north expansion without destroying them. Getting rid of them kind of signals that you're going for the north expansion. But that is apparently what Cybernetic Pony is planning on doing. So Monkuki is... Well, taking a fair amount of damage, actually. This is, from his point of view, too, a little bit before the present, at three-minute mark... He is taking a fair amount of damage. I'm not sure where his Zion Veer went. I think he might have lost it, actually. Yeah, he loses it during the fight. So he's got to actually deal with that. He's going to probably build another Zion Veer, possibly build a foundation for healing. There we go. There's a foundation. I don't know if he's going to build an early depot. I think he will. He does have the early Q-Plasma, so he's probably going to build a depot right about now. Well, now. Yeah, there we go. There's the depot. And then from there, he's going to be able to get a Zion Pulsar. And then from there, he's going to be able to get rid of the Marine and Special Ops without any issue. And Cybernetic Pony, on the, on the other hand, is continuing to build up. He hasn't really changed himself too much. Just double-checking the micromanagement on this attack. 
Seeing the foundation and, from his perspective, destroying it, but Monkuki, there we go. Now we see the updated perspective. Monkuki actually has returned to scouting forces to base to help defend with the depot in place, or just about to be built up. Definitely not going to be destroyed by this Marine Special Ops before it's completed, especially being that there are other units to attack them. The Marine Special Ops will get rid of the Tethvir and Shinvir, but the Zionvir, as long as it's alive, it could turn into a Zion Pulsar, and that will pretty much do it. Now, Monkuki, is he trying to very quickly get units into here? He is trying to get the Zion Veer up front. That's probably a bad idea, actually. He wants the Zion Veer to live as long as possible, so the Zion Pulsar can actually be produced. But nope, Zion Veer is going off to his death. Or, or Cybernetic Point is going to completely retreat from this and keep his forces at home in order to make sure that he doesn't have to worry about the Zion Pulsar. Getting a Lancer up, very good idea, because Lancers, of course, are air units that are very effective against... Well, they're effective against ground, relatively, and they're effective against Zion Pulsars, because Zion Pulsars cannot hit air. And from Cybernetic Pony's point of view, he has won, and from Monkuki's point of view, he is doing fine. Now, being that Monkuki did not actually lose these forces, these Vin these Veer forces, ultimately, he could very easily build a Teth Pulsar. Admittedly, he needs a bit more cash on hand, but still, he has the economy that he could pretty easily get a Teth Pulsar up within the next 20 seconds. Which is when he has to do so. And the factory hasn't even been built at this point. The 328 mark, Zion Pulsar has been built. Factory has not for Cybernetic Pony just being built now with a 340 mark. So that Lance is going to take a while to come in. A Teth Pulsar is not unlikely, and it's completely known about. In fact, the Teth Veer on its own would do just fine, apparently. So the Teth Pulsar has been. Well, pretty much shown to be moot. The Lancer, Monkey is aware of this. Monkey does not seem to be particularly worried, and Cybernetic Pony, there we go, he is attacking that column up to the northeast at the 552 mark, jumping back about two minutes to Monkey's point of view. Cybernetic Pony has not quite started to destroy the northeast comm hub yet, but he does have a factory meal being built up, and Zion Pulsar, a second Zion Pulsar being built up with Skip Teleport, and Monkey very quickly going to get the money for it. Looks like he's planning on going for an aerial control center, which is an interesting choice. There it is, the aerial control center. I... Don't think he has enough money to actually build much of anything. He could probably build... Uh, I guess he could build a Teth Tercher. I mean, that's definitely more... Oh, it's 144 by 60. 144 LC and 60 QP. That's not easy. Or Shin Tercher. I think it's 95, 105 or somewhere in that ballpark. 95, 104 for Shin Tercher. 144, 60 for Teth Tercher. And that definitely is possible. The t Teth Tercher, at least, is possible. I'm guessing he's going to go for that. Possibly to just have something to deal with this Lancer. Now, Lancers, I should say. Plural. More than one being built, and a mech being built up, so a Macrofab is very likely to be built up fairly soon. Cybernetic Pony has enough money, he could easily get Gate Tech. There it is! <laughs> Speak of the Devil, and there it shows up with the gates of... No, not really hell. Unless that's what the teleporters are. Like It's like Doom, where... The teleporters just go through hell first. I don't think that's what happens. I, I think the teleporters are relatively safe. I don't think they run through any terrible hell dimensions or anything like that as part of their normal mode of operation. They might, though. I mean, Hazardous has been kind of silent on the idea, the lore behind how teleporters work, but I'm assuming that they are fairly, fairly safe and inferno-proof. They aren't going to drive you mad or otherwise expose you to terrible, horrible things from beyond time and space. That doesn't seem in character for this game. However, what is a harmful thing being exposed to is a Zion Pulsar being exposed to the Lancer because it can't do anything against them. And this is where the Teth... Enter Teth Tercher or, or not. No, Monkuki still hasn't started building Teth Turchers yet. Honestly, I'm a little surprised. He could afford... He could afford to build a couple of them. He has the aerial control center, he has the money, he doesn't have the chrono energy, but he has everything else he needs. He's got the Zion Pulsars away. Wow, Zion Pulsars are really away. Going into one of the crevices of the terracing and not even worried about that, just getting it out of there. And one of them, however, is found by the Lancer, being destroyed by the Lancer, or possibly being destroyed. It looks like that destruction is something that... Monkey is trying to get away from, trying to avoid. He is teleporting to base, he is going to be able to depot repair, and that will save it. And there we are, there are those Teth Turchers I was looking for. And Teth Turcher 1, and Zion Pulse are done, and Teth Turcher 2 coming up in about 20 seconds. So that, it, well, we're in fast forward, so 10 seconds. 
So Mankuki ultimately not losing any forces. That's good. That's how you should play Vekir. Try to avoid losing forces. However, Gate Tech is up. Teleporters and Chronoporters will be built up fairly soon. It looks like a mech was building up a Chronoporter at about the... Oh, it looks like about a minute from now. The 749 mark, that's probably when the mech was building that. He built the Macrofab in about 10 seconds and he... That is going to be scary. So Monkuki has to deal with the fact that Gate Tech has been researched. Now, one thing is that CISO has the weakest Gate Tech. They have... I mean, they have the cost of Gate Tech, plus the cost of the Chrono Porter, plus the time it takes to have the Chrono Porter recharge, which they have to do in advance. Vekgear only has to have the Slipgate recharge after the first Chrono Porter. So the first Chrono Porter can happen instantaneously. And here we go. This is a Teleporter, no, Chrono Porter being built up. So the first Chrono Porter, four Cybernetic Pony being built up at the 8-minute mark, and a Teleporter being built up as well instead of the Macrofab from the looks of it. Cybernetic Pony could still build the Macrofab. He has the money to do so, but it looks like he's planning on Chrono Porting back these Lancers and then working from there... So I anticipate that these Lancers are going to be what we see thrown back in time. Possibly the Marines as well. The Lancers would be a really good idea, though. It would get rid of these Zion Pulsers pretty definitively. And with the Teth Veer, one of the Teth Veers actually being the Teth Tercher here, that's also going to be kind of tricky to deal with. Though, Cybernetic Pony has to throw it to the right time. And I'm not sure if he's actually going to be planning on doing that. The Chrono Porter still has another minute before it's going to be ready. Is just getting finished, then the recharge time is going to be about, I think, oh, less than that. It's going to be about 20 seconds. Okay, so, at this point exactly, though, attacks to the north, and like I said, signaling that this expansion exists, a Lancer there to protect it, but it may not be enough. The Lancer, I don't think it will be enough, actually. I think that these Zion Pulses might be just going on a suicide mission. Teth Churchers down here, the south side of the map, are on standby. I think Monkey might be going... I know he's planning on having them help out, but no, it looks like more Lancers have come in. Cybernetic Pony doing a good job reinforcing the defenses over there. Though, that could be a diversion, and it would be a clever one too if Monkey were to use that as a diversion. And then right next to the Impalable Pass is in, right now, he sends back all of his units over to the main base. It looks like instead he is planning on going the route of killing them with Teth Turchers. So baiting them in, killing them with Teth Turchers, not losing any units in the process. Very nicely done, Monkey. I don't really know who's the underdog here because both these players are actually quite good. But at this point, Monkuki is definitely getting an immediate advantage. Cybernetic Pony is advantage is much more in the long term. He has a Chronoporter and a Teleporter up, which is big. And he has Frigates coming up, which is also fairly big. So Cybernetic Pony definitely has a lot of potential for dealing a great deal of damage. But Monkuki has an army. An army that he hasn't lost any members of, I should add. Ultimately, he has kept every single unit in his army completely intact, repairing them from time to time, but that's free. So, he has not spent any extra resources in his army to replenish them. Well, Cybernetic Pony, of course, has, because Vekir is the only species that can actually go back and just repair his units like that. But that's a big part of how you play Vekir properly. And Monkuki is doing a great job, taking full advantage of that. And he has enough money to get Gate Tech of his own. I don't think he's going to do that right now. I think he's probably going to build a few more units... No, he's in fact going... Well, he went for housing class, but that's fairly cheap. I don't think he's going to be going for... No, actually, he has a... He actually think he's going for gate tech. Never mind, he's not building more units. He is getting a foundation. I think this is going to be a slipgate foundation right here. And Cybernetic Pony is going for... Well, he's going for more frigates, trying to get rid of this here. And he is chrono pointing back the frigates as well to win this battle. And now, at this point, Monkuki has finally lost a unit permanently. Two units, in fact, because the Teth Searcher did not get back here in time to deal with the Lancers. And the Frigate as well, still doing what damage it can. The Lancers... The Frigate's ultimately dying, but forcing everything here to be destroyed. And it looks like Bonkuki has lost his units this time around. Cybernetic Pony... Nice Chronoport there. Not a whole lot that Bonkuki can do, though he was saving up for Gate Tech. I expect he will be going for that. I should point out that Bonkuki has started expanding to the south, so... Bonkuki has an economic advantage... Cybernetic Pony has a technological advantage, and Monkuki had a military advantage, but has since lost it in the blue time wave iteration that's coming in through now. And there is Gate Tech in progress. Just started up at the 11 minute mark. A little late, but better than never, and Monkuki is definitely prepared for this, or at least he thinks he is. He would be prepared for this, though he doesn't have the units ultimately to actually use this. Still, with an economic advantage like that, it's worth having. Now, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he teleported a bunch of RPs over to the center of the map fairly recently and actually teleported a marine over to the center of the map here and built some RPs here 
So he's definitely got a safer expansion than what Monkuki has, though Monkuki has much longer lasting setup than overall what Cyber Night Pony has. Cyber Night Pony is running out of his crates in his main base. Monkuki has just finished Gate Tech, getting a Slipgate, and these blue time wave, this blue time wave here is going to destroy these units, except for the Teth Torcher. That's the only unit he has left. He needs to build more units. Probably other Teth units, really. Teth Torcher, Teth Balser. Maybe Shin Torcher, but it's kind of risky. And, oh, a Zion Veer apparently ultimately getting rid of everything that was left. Getting rid of the Lancer and getting rid of the RP. So, Cybernetic Pony still slightly behind. And getting Martanks, there we go. I was wondering about them earlier in this match, and we finally see them right there. Martanks. Ground units being researched. A Twin Mar will be forthcoming. And Tornods as well to help against this. The best bet would be Teth and Shin Turchers together. And there we go. Tornod being chronoported back, teleported over to get rid of this expansion at the 1040 mark. Two minutes down from the playable past, and another frigate being chronoported back. At, actually, this frigate we originally saw, the first chronoport we saw from a Cybernetic Pony. Well, Monkuki does see what's going on, and he doesn't have his own slipgate yet. Cybernetic Pony at this point in time, we do see the slipgate, but we don't see any units being built up to be used with it. So Monkuki can go back, can chronoport back some units to deal with this. And it looks like he's planning on chronoporting back this Teth Turcher. No other units have been constructed yet, but this Teth Torture will likely be chronoported back. No, it, it apparently has actually... Oh, it's out of range. It it moved to assist the Zion Veer, which is actually building an expansion over to the north. Cybernetic Pony has not bothered to deal with this yet. He is continuing just along the center here. So, Monkuki apparently not aware that he had moved his Teth Torture or had originally set move orders for that Teth Torture, getting it back, but it's a little late. He's going to be able to barely get it chronoported back to deal with this attack here which looks like it's probably on the main base. Everything coming in the main base, and he's going to be able to uh, hit about here. So he'll be able to stem the... T he'll be able to stem the blood, but... Oh, this is the expansion. Okay, he's actually going to be fine. He does have a Teth Torture coming along here. It will be able to get rid of the Tornad. No problem here. He's actually not even got to worry about stemming anything. He's pretty much got this. A Twin Mar coming towards the north side. Cybernetic Pony is being vindictive at this point, sending in one unit at a time around the map at seemingly random times, whenever he can. Monkuki does have enough air units to be able to defend against this. He can easily use the Teth Turchers, and if he gets Shin Turchers, that'll just seal it. But it is still pretty tricky. It's still a close match, and instead, note, Zion Halcyon is being built. Not a... I wouldn't totally support that idea. They don't really have the range advantage on Twin Mars. Twin Mars are the single strongest unit in the entire game. Not to mention the range, but in terms of raw damage per second, they are the single strongest unit. Now, Zion Halcyons are actually the single toughest unit in the game with 600 health. But, well, okay, actually, the ins the Gargantuan has 700 health. But other than the carrier-type units, Zion Halcyon is the toughest unit in the game. And the Twin Mark coming in and getting rid of this aerial control center while Tornado comes from below. What? That Tornado should have been destroyed by the Teth Tercher. Well, okay, this is very worrisome. The Teth Torcher is coming back. It is trying to get rid of the... Oh, I see. It got distracted by the Twin Mar. Not able to chronoport back to deal with the Tornad here. I think Monkuki has lost this. Yeah, I think he has. He does have a couple... No, Zion Halcyons had not yet been built at this point. He is jumping towards the future, trying to probably chronoport them back, but it's going to be pretty much impossible to do so. He's certainly going to try. And is that chronoport going to happen? Let's see. It should be right now. And it's going to end up right about here. Probably in front of the green time of actually. No! He has nothing to chronoport back with! He has to jump further in the future to try to save this, try to bootstrap his base, ultimately getting out a paradox situation, but if he times it right, it should resolve in his favor. And there we go, just barely getting that chronoport through and across in the time wave. And it looks like this Ted Searcher ultimately able to chronoport back, getting stopped by Twin Mar, but able to get rid of the Tornad, buying enough time so that the Zion Halcyon... No, Zion Halcyon not, unfortunately, able to chronoport back. The departure happened right as the time wave crossed it to stop the departure from actually being a valid thing to happen. The Annex is destroyed, so there's no way of getting back on that. I think this is... No, this is game. That was pretty harsh, though, because that was... That chronoport departure happened right as the blue time wave was crossing it, which means the blue time wave had invalidated it as the chronoport departure became a valid thing on the timeline, but before the corresponding arrival happened. So in between that transition, as that transition occurred, as Monkuki's player line jumped from where the blue timer was propagating over the 
d departure to his arrival, the departure was no longer valid. That is about the tightest window you could possibly have for that sort of failure to happen. And it happened to Monkuki. So, bit of a shame, but that is how the game went down. So I hope you enjoyed that. I believe Monkuki is going to be throwing the towel. He has said GG. That's probably going to be it. I imagine he's just looking around the battlefield, seeing exactly what's going on, what exactly happened. But yeah, that's basically what happened. That's really, really, really tight timing. If he had jumped forward five seconds later, or, well, about five seconds, about that level of precision, he would have had been better. Probably not fine. I mean, the annex was still destroyed. That was a big deal. But he might have actually had a chance. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and that will be the games for tonight. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everybody.